There's a lot of people out there who have a whole lot of misconceptions about e-learning, and we're going to dig into those today. Hey there folks, Tim Slade here. So whenever I'm interacting with different folks within the learning industry, uh, specifically folks who don't develop e-learning content as their primary uh, job, this might be classroom facilitators, more traditional instructional designers, whatever, I find that they tend to have some interesting misconceptions about e-learning. And as I've interacted with different folks over the years, I found that many of these uh, misconceptions share a lot of similarities. So I wanna talk about some of those misconceptions today and hopefully uh, set the record straight about uh, some of these crazy ideas that I think people have about e-learning. All right, so let's dig into the first misconception. The first misconception that I oftentimes encounter is this idea that e-learning will eventually replace the classroom or that e-learning, e-learning designers, will eventually replace classroom facilitators. And that could not be further from the truth. Uh, I, as an e-learning designer, I am not trying to create e-learning content that alleviates the need for the classroom. And I am not trying to get rid of classroom facilitators by any means. Uh, this idea that e-learning will become like this single monolithic way of delivering learning content, I feel like is just such a narrow view of the way learning works and the way that we, uh, not even as e-learning designers, but we as instructional designers are developing learning experiences and delivering that learning content to learners. The truth is e-learning is just one small component of a larger ecosystem of learning. Whether you think about learning from the classroom perspective or from e-learning and digital learning content to performance support to social learning, e-learning is just one component of it. And the truth is e-learning actually complements the classroom in a lot of different ways. Maybe you have your learners take an e-learning course before going into the classroom where they can practice whatever it is that they might have learned in the e-learning course preceding it. E-learning is just one piece of a larger ecosystem of learning, and it is not going to replace the classroom. There's always going to be the need for the classroom and a facilitator and all of that really good stuff. We are not trying to uh, replace the classroom. Not at all. The second misconception that I run into frequently is uh, regarding e-learning is this idea that in order for an e-learning course to be effective, it must be highly interactive. And like the previous misconception, I think that's a really narrow view of what e-learning is. I mean, ask yourself, what is e-learning? Well, if we were to really give a formal definition, it's e-learning, so electronic learning, kind of like email, right? It's electronic learning. And if we go down this route of defining e-learning as electronic learning, uh, the style of e-learning content that most people think of is this interactive course where you can click on things and maybe have scenarios. That's just one type of e-learning content. E-learning is really any type of learning content that's delivered via a computer or a tablet or some sort of digital device. So you could theoretically consider um, an explainer video as a form of e-learning or a PDF, even if it's just an, a passive article in a PDF delivered uh, on a computer, that's technically e-learning. It's anything that's delivered electronically to a learner. It's not just this idea that it needs to be interactive in order to be effective. It really needs to just be fit for function. All right, the third and final misconception that I oftentimes encounter as it relates to e-learning is this idea that people hate e-learning or learners hate e-learning. And uh, the truth is, no, I don't think people hate e-learning. I think people hate bad e-learning. I think people hate e-learning that isn't fit for function. I think people hate, in general, bad learning experiences that aren't relevant to them or help them accomplish something new or get better at their job. So people don't hate e-learning. I think people hate poorly designed e-learning. Um, the thing about e-learning is that it needs to be fit for function and it needs to be relevant to the learner. And not even e-learning, learning in general needs to be fit for function and it needs to be relevant to the learner and it needs to help them accomplish something new. Um, this idea that people hate e-learning I think comes from uh, 
from most of us having experienced a lot of really bad e-learning um, in the past where you had to sit down and go through a 30 minute online course that was just horribly designed and didn't help you actually accomplish anything new. People hate that kind of e-learning. But if e-learning can be designed where it can be super relevant to the learner, it helps them accomplish something new, and it's delivered right at the point in which somebody needs that content, then people won't hate that. People will learn from it and better become better at their jobs as a result of it. So people don't hate e-learning, people hate bad e-learning. All right, so those are just some of the misconceptions about e-learning that I regularly encounter, which leads me to my question of the day. What other misconceptions about e-learning have you encountered? You can share those by commenting below. All right, thank you folks so much for watching today's video. Make sure to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below. And until next time, I'll see you later. Hey there, YouTubers. If you liked that video and you wanna learn more about becoming an e-learning designer, click that subscribe button down here. Check out some of my other great videos and follow me at timslay.com.